Hey everyone, Kappa Man here, and welcome back to another Yokai Quickie. How are you doing? Feeling alright? Just thought I'd check in with you and make sure all's well. But uh, you're here, so I guess that means things can't be too bad, right? Well then, on to today's review. In fact, this is only just the beginning of what I can imagine is going to be a long road. You see, today I will be looking at the first episode of a two-season series called The Ancient Dogu Girl, or Kodai Shoujo Doguchan. First airing in 2009, this is a light-hearted take on the effects-heavy Super Sentai Monster of the Week style shows, also known as Tokusatsu. Brought to us by the same man who made such classics as The Machine Girl and Robo Geisha, which, by the way, aren't yokai related, so I won't be reviewing them, but I do recommend you check them out. The ancient Dogu Girl stars the undeniably adorable gravure model Erika Yazawa. Donning a costume based on the real world mysterious relics known as Dogu, she claims to be a yokai hunter, going up against a different beast each episode. A quick quickie side note. There are still many unanswered questions about the Dogu to this day. They seem to hail from the Jomon period, which was between 14,000 to 400 BC, and are some of Japan's oldest known art. These are also exclusive to Japan, being found across the entire country except for Okinawa. Archaeologists still don't have a clear understanding of why these were made although some theories have it that they are human effigies, used to take on the illness of those that became sick, thus sparing the human they emulated. Another theory says they are fertility statues, as the large eyes, big hips, and small waist possibly represent the image of a woman. Well, if Doguchan is anything to go by, it's not such a big leap in logic. Anyways, back to the show. The first episode begins with a strange interaction between an ill-looking man speaking with some mysterious woman in a bath. Although we don't see his fate, it's apparent something fishy is going on. Meanwhile, we're introduced to a young man named Makoto Sugihara playing games alone in his room until his father comes and forces him outside. They spend some time out in the forest when Makoto's father finds what appears to be a regular Dogu statue. Ecstatic at such a rare find, he runs back to the house to do further research, neglecting to tell his son. Once Makoto goes searching for his father, he trips across what appears to be another set of sculptures, and promptly grabs a feel. Burning a symbol into his hand, he gets more than he bargained for when Doguchan rises from the dirt, showing her childish nature almost immediately. It's not before long that she rushes off, following a scent, leading them both to a parking lot. She runs off again, and that's when Makoto comes across a strange pair who invite him to sit in on one of their group meetings. It quickly becomes apparent that this was a mistake to join them, as they seem obsessed with the woman leading the group. Also, check out this guy's hair, wowee. Still following her nose, Doguchan finds human skeletons near the building and is attacked, which is when she calls for help from her little sidekick buddy Dokigoro, awakening the Dogu statue. Inside, the members of the group happily down a disgusting looking fish drink which sends them into a trance. They imagine spending quality time with the woman, and some of these scenarios are actually pretty funny, especially the one guy who imagines her being impressed at his counting ability. Count on, my friend, count on. When the drink's effect does nothing for Makoto, he is brought into the same bathroom from the opening of the episode. The woman reveals that it is actually her bath water that the men have been drinking, and she is in fact a fishwoman yokai. Of course, Doku-chan does battle with her, even combining with Doki Goro to gain extra armor. The fight is simple but fun, and even leads to boob lasers, which end up absorbing the yokai essence of the fishwoman. Gee, that must be how they got so big. The group of worshippers even come to complain, and she knocks them out with boob hypnosis, which uh, I think has been used on me on a few occasions. Anyways, the episode ends with Dogu-chan now living with Makoto, his father, and Doki Goro. 
So there you have it. A rather ridiculous but very self-aware episode that clearly is not taking things too seriously. I think if you have the same attitude, you can really enjoy the show. It didn't drag on, had some good jokes and plenty of eye candy, so why not give this one a look? And next episode, Doguchan goes to school. So, I guess I'll see you then. And thanks for watching this Yoga Quickie. And if you have a movie or a show you'd like me to review, just let me know in the comments below. You can also follow me on social media at the links in the description to see what's going on behind the scenes. See you next time.